customer dropped this off the other day. Take a look at the grip. I'll show you in this video what I'll be doing to this racket. All right, let's go inside. All right, so before I go ahead and unwrap this grip, I did want to tell you a little backstory about this racket. It belongs to a customer that has two of these rackets, and one of them is a four and three eighths, and the second racket is a four and a quarter. So what she tried to do was to make the grip so they're the same. On her other frame, uh, she has her grip, the one with the four and three eighths with an overwrap. And when I measured it with the overwrap, it actually comes out to a four and five eighths. Uh, she does tend to prefer a large grip but because she has arthritis. And typically players that have arthritis uh, will like to have a grip uh, that's larger so it's easier to hold on to. So it works for her. But in this case, uh, when I measured what she did here, I um, have this grip sizer and it's a four and seven eighths. So it is actually two sizes larger than her other grip. So what I am gonna do is take off these grips and I'll build, a, build it up with a heat shrink sleeve and uh, in the end, I'll make her grip a four and five eighths. Well, by the way, this grip sizer is something that I made. And uh, if you check out the video, I'll provide the link below. You can check it out there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start taking off these grips. Now, this first layer, uh, which is a replacement grip, uh, if you notice that the tapered end is actually on the top. So I did another video about pet peeves and this is really one of those things that I mentioned on that video. So um, most, some players think that the tapered end should be at the top, but really uh, it should be at the bottom. So I'm taking this off. And uh, remember when I measured it was a four and seven eighths. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the grip again and see what it is now, just to see what the difference is by taking off that first replacement grip. All right, so now it's a four and three eighths. So that's a difference of four sizes. So this particular grip happens to be pretty thick. Uh, most replacement grips, will build up a grip about three sizes, but uh, I think this one's extra thick, so it was a difference of four sizes on that. All right, so there's an over grip that I'm gonna remove on this next layer. And uh, it was at four and three eighths, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. And we'll just go ahead and measure it again to see if it actually does bring it down to four and a quarter. Yep, it's uh, between a one eighth and a quarter. So I think, uh, and this is the original base grip. So I'm thinking that um, after use, it got compressed. So it's probably a little bit smaller than a four and a quarter, but it probably started off at a four and a quarter. So replacement grips take, uh, build up the grip size about three sizes and your typical over grip will increase it by one size. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this uh, base grip uh it looks like the yeah it looks like the original grip so it's coming off very cleanly there's the double stick backing but it's uh coming off really nicely uh, a lot of times it'll get stuck on the the pallet here so i'll have to get a box cutter and start uh slicing it and then peeling it off but this came out very nicely so i'll go ahead with the next step of this uh, uh procedure before I start the application of the heat shrink sleeve, uh, you wanna make sure you have the proper tools. So I'll be using the one size thickness of the heat shrink sleeve. Uh, heat gun, a box cutter, I have an awl, finishing tape. I have a razor, a scissors, and sandpaper. It's a fine grade sandpaper. Um, so what I'm gonna do is inspect the butt cap first. And I did notice that on this particular one, that there is some scraping on the end over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually sand that off and I'll tell you why later. If it was a new butt cap or a new racket that the butt cap wasn't damaged or uh, scuffed up, then I wouldn't even bother. But I wanna smoothen that out a little bit just to make sure that there's no rough uh, edges or uh, the surface is nice and smooth. So, uh, you can use also an emery board. That would also work good if you have one of those or a nail file probably would work just as well. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and just smoothen that out so it's uh, there's no rough uh, surface on this, uh, right on this corner of the butt cap. And um, again, I'll tell you, it'll make more sense if I tell you later. So I got that pretty smooth there. So I'm gonna just uh, stop there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the heat shrink sleeve. And on uh, this one, it's uh, the Gamma brand. And uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna actually use this whole thing. So I wanna make sure that I have about an inch extra on both ends of what I'm gonna be using. So I have about an inch here. I'm gonna cut off part of this right here. So, cause when you shrink it with the heat gun, it's gonna, it'll, it'll come in, obviously it'll shrink. So it'll come in. So an inch is good to have as an extra um, on each side. All right, so now I'm ready to start heating it up. And what I want to do is make sure that I don't have anything uh, behind or around it that the heat is going to uh, affect. So I have to move this away from the table. So I'm going to use the high heat also. It works faster. So basically I'm going to just start from the butt cap and just make sure that all of this stuff is shrunk, uh, securing the butt cap. And then I'm going to rotate the racket and work my way down to the top of the grip. You want to just make sure that as you see it start to shrink that you are rotating it so the heat gun is not going to stay in one place uh, for very long and by rotating it it allows the sleeve to shrink more evenly and you want to make sure that you're doing that throughout the entire process So now that I'm done to the top, I just do another pass going up and down each bevel just to kind of make sure that I'm getting it um, in this direction also. All right, so I'm going to let this cool off before I start cutting or trimming off the ends. All right, so I'm gonna trim the top of the heat shrink sleeve. So I have white finishing tape. I'm using white because I wanted to make sure it's not the same color as the black because what I'm gonna do is I'm lining up this tape to where I actually wanna have this thing cut so that I'm gonna use the tape to use as a guide so I get a nice even cut at the top of the grip. And uh, you can use this technique if you are taking the USRSA certification test for stringing and uh, you do have to come up with a nice even cut so you can eyeball it but I found that this provides a nice guide for you to just follow so I have my box cutter and you want to make sure it's nice and sharp because in that way you can go through it hopefully one pass and you don't have to keep rotating a racket around and around to get it to cut through so I uh, went ahead and started my cut and I'm rotating the racket and I'm back to the starting point here. So what I want to do is see if that'll lift away or break away from that other side. So it's not quite there yet. So I'm just going to rotate it again, just make sure the cut goes through the entire sleeve. And then once it's uh, cut through, I'll, I'll be removing this uh, finishing tape. All right, that feels like it's about there. Yep, that's good. So I'm just gonna cut away at one side of this to just get this to remove, so I can remove it. And you just wanna make sure you watch your fingers. Uh, there we go. So there's some parts that are still stuck, so I'm gonna just go ahead and finish that. So yeah, I lined it up right at the top of the palette. So uh, you could leave the tape, I guess, if you wanted to, but 
um, I, I'm going to take it off. And so that there you have it. It's uh, nice and even right up to the top of the, the grip. All right, so the next process is going to be the uh, butt cap. All right, so for this butt cap, I'm actually going to be um, standing for this, so I had to change this. But uh, anyway, I'm going to use a box cutter and kind of cut off the extra portion that's sticking out over here because I definitely don't want that to get in the way when I start trimming it with the razor. So uh, I'm just going to cut that off for now. All right, so right now it looks like that. And um, on this particular butt cap, this uh, Wilson one, uh, it has rounded edges. So if you can see that, so these butt caps are a little bit harder to trim as far as getting the edge of the sleeve to line up because it's rounded. Whereas you have a butt cap like this where it's nice and squared off. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the razor and use the edge of the butt cap and try to uh, shave off or cut it uh, using that. But you have to watch out not to angle the blade into the butt cap, otherwise it'll start cutting into the butt cap. The other tip that I noticed, um, well for me, is I actually bend my razor so it looks like that. And I feel like I have a little bit better control over how I'm angling the razor as I cut through the uh, heat shrink sleeve. All right, so, so I have it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and slice one side. It doesn't matter where you start really, but you just wanna try and get it down slowly to the point that you wanna start your cut and make it flush to the butt cap. All right, so I'm right down to about there. So right now you can't see it because it's covered by the heat shrink sleeve, but Basically, I got my razor and I'm right down to uh, right down to about there, I believe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this edge of the butt cap to uh, use as a guide and then hopefully trim it so it looks nice and nice and uh, straight. Now earlier I did use the sandpaper and the reason why I did that is um, when you have a butt cap, and this is a good example, that's really scuffed up like this, uh, as you try to run the razor along it, if it has all these scuff marks, it tends to make the razor get uh, st uh, stuck. So you want to make sure that that surface is nice and smooth. So when you use a razor, it'll go around um, a lot smoother. So I'm going to go back to where I had that cut made. And I'm going to actually hold the razor in place and try not to uh, change the angle of the razor. And then as I find my spot, I'm gonna rotate the, the racket around. So hopefully that'll make sense as I'm doing it. So again, I'm gonna really make sure that I'm not cutting into the butt cap. I found my spot right there. And I'm just gonna rotate the racket as I'm cutting through the heat shrink sleeve and making sure that I'm not actually cutting the butt cap and just slowly getting that. It does take a little bit of feel in terms of how you, okay, it's getting stuck right there. So I just wanna really be careful. I'm not cutting the butt cap at this point. So that might be a rough spot. Oh, I got through it, okay. And um, almost there. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting all the sides and cutting it through. I'm actually going past the beginning point, but all right, so so I got it through there. It, uh, it is a little bit more challenging when you have a butt cap that's rounded, but uh, you can see that it's uh, pretty flush on the ends there. So uh, again, when you have a rounded butt cap, it's a little bit more challenging, something like this. Now I'm ready to wrap the grip. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I took a look at this uh, replacement grip that was on the the first one that I removed and uh, earlier I did mention it's on the thicker side and um, what I'm thinking is I'm gonna reuse that grip because when I measured the size of the now enlarged grip it's falling between a four and a four and one eighth right in the middle so uh, most grips normal uh, grips are gonna build at about three sizes but 
really what I want to make the grip end up at, at is four and a half because when I add the over grip, it'll probably be a four and five eighths and that's the target grip size. So uh, we'll see how this goes with this, this particular grip. Now it has a, a decent amount of tackiness on the back, so I'm not gonna reapply double stick tape. I think it'll stay as is. So I'll go ahead and wrap it. Now the, um, I mentioned earlier that the tapered end was actually at the top, so I will not be wrapping it that way. I wanna make sure that the tapered end is always at the butt cap. And so I'll go ahead and start from one side. And um, I did um, wrap a grip previously in one of my other videos. And uh, I like to usually start on the, the flat uh, bevel, either on, um, on this side, uh, but you can really start anywhere. But I do like to angle the grip so it's slightly inwards so that when you make your first wrap, it covers the, uh, this corner right here. So if that makes sense. But uh, anyway, I, that's what I'm doing right now. So it might be hard to see with this uh, colored grip on top of the black buildup sleeve. So I, uh, yeah, I overlapped that corner on that first rotation. Yeah, this is an interesting grip. It's, uh, it has this honeycomb pattern on it and it's, um, I haven't seen this before. It's a it's a gamma honeycomb grip. So uh, this might provide enough to actually make it a four and a half. Whereas normally uh, it should it should be a four and three eight. So we'll see. Um, so I'm kind of curious right now before I cut it, I want to see where it's at. So I'm gonna just hold it in place before I tape it and before I trim it and tape it. So I just want to see if this is going to be like a four and a half. So right now it's slightly under a four and a half, which um, I think will work. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep wrapping this and I think we're good. If we can, um, uh, after we finish this, I'm going to put the over wrap in. I want to make sure that it's going to end up at four and five eighths. All right, so there's a lot of extra and previously that uh, customer was using the whole length of the grip. So there was a lot of overlapping too that was going on. So I'm definitely gonna trim it off here. So I'm gonna make my mark so I know where to cut the top. And uh, here's a useful tip. Uh, I use a uh, Sharpie pen, but I use a, a silver color because it'll show up on almost any colored grip. So I made my mark where I'm gonna cut. So uh, if you can see it, it's the mark is from here to here and I'm just gonna get my pair of scissors and just make sure I match those two marks. Now when I get to the end of the cut, I just wanna make sure that I hold this end right here so that it doesn't unravel. So I'm holding it and finishing that cut. All right, so I'm gonna finish it off with some finishing tape. And then um, after I wrap the over grip, we're gonna measure and see if it ends up at four and five eighths. All right, so I went ahead and wrapped the overgrip on top of the grip that I just installed. And I'm gonna get my grip sizer here and measure the size of the grip now with everything on there. And we're hoping that it lines up at four and five eighths and it's right there. So I'll bring this up. So you'll see that uh, the number uh, right there, it's right at number five, right on that line. So it's perfect the way it is. So um, I'm gonna hand this to the customer as is, and um, yeah, see if she likes it. I did wanna mention that the heat shrink sleeves do come in a full size, which is what I used in this video, and it does come in a half size. So depending on uh, what you wanna accomplish, but the weight is also a factor that you might wanna consider. So if you weigh what the full size one is, it's about 0.7 ounces, which in grams would be about 19 grams. Whereas this half size sleeve, which should come in at about half of that. So it's about uh, nine grams or 0.3 ounces. Now, um, so what I did was on this racket, um, when I strung it the first time, I took the original specs and it was 11.1 ounces. So I'm gonna see what it is now after we worked on um, 
adding the heat shrink sleeve, the uh, replacement grip, and the overgrip. So uh, right now we're at um, 11.5 and it started off at 11.1. So that actually is a good thing because her other racket happens to be 11.4 ounces. Um, so that actually matches up. Now the swing weight started off at 298 and adding weight to the handle is not going to affect the swing weight but we'll just go ahead and just check it just to make sure and yep so it's coming in at the same it's about 299 so um her other racket is 300 so I mean, the swing weight was already pretty similar, but the racket weight is actually uh, a better weight now. So this customization actually worked in her benefit where she got the racket to be a uh, similar weight and similar grip size. In today's video, I shared with you the most common way to build up a grip using heat shrink sleeves. There are other ways that you can build up a grip. And I did another video titled Custom Overgrip Wrap where I reduced and maintained a grip using overgrips but you can also use that technique to build up a grip if you don't have heat shrink sleeves. Now, if you're planning to become a certified stringer or master racket technician, you will have to use heat shrink sleeves, so make sure you practice that. If you'd like to learn more about racket stringing, check out the International Alliance of Racket Technicians, and I'll provide that link below. Thanks for watching, happy gripping, and let your strings play. Now, if you're becoming a certified stringer or master racket te technician, uh, did I, yeah. So Daisy, how was your racket today? Absolutely fantastic. Great. What do you guys? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that much. So Daisy, how was your racket today? Absolutely fantastic, Albert. Thank you. Great. You guys have anything to say? No more. Play, play with, with the low bar and let, let your strings play. play.